Well, happy birthday to me, guys. Just like last year, where last year I went through every single year that I had been alive and talked about my favorite movie from each year. Today, I'm going to be going over my favorite video games from each and every year that I have been alive. We have 1997 to now, of course, 2021 to discuss. And I'm so excited to be here talking this with you guys. So shout out to Sean Chandler, who started this idea. And then Cody Leach kind of elevated that idea with the video game concept now. Because as much as I love movies, I also love video games. And I'm so excited to be here talking with that again so make sure to comment down below let me know your list of video games that you love from the years that you were born and without further ado let's get started At 1997, a little game called Final Fantasy VII debuted, and it's one of the games that I have absolutely adored all throughout my entire life. It, every single time it pops up on a console, I end up buying this game. I end up going back through it, and even with the new remake on the PS4, I very much was engaged with it. Even though, yes, it is not the same exact game, especially that by the end that we see, it's something that still engaged me. I love Cloud, I love Sephiroth, I love the whole entire cast, and while I adore the original one and all the different things that it's able to further out, my favorite thing about it was always the mythology in the world, and especially the story. This comes down to be my favorite Final Fantasy game ever, and it'll always remain that way. In 1998, a little game called Spyro the Dragon debuted on the PlayStation 1, and ever since then, Spyro has become one of the most iconic characters in my entire life. Some people love Crash Bandicoot, some people love Mario, some people love Sonic, but when it comes to platformers, it was really much Spyro the Dragon that kind of took me by storm. You know, I loved Crash, I love Sonic, I love Mario, and hell, even Banjo and Kazooie was my shit. But when it came down to one of them, it was Spyro the Dragon in 1998 that totally took me by storm. Those first three games, especially the first one, I put an immense amount of time into as a child. And even to this day, sometimes I do revisit them, especially with now the remasters that faithfully took that original game and brought it into a new era. I love this character of Spyro. I love the wacky characters that he must go insane. And just in general, him being a dragon, him flying and breathing fire, that's everything I could absolutely want. And in 1999, my life completely changed when Pokemon Silver came out. The, one of the first video games I ever owned for the Game Boy Color and is the first Pokemon game I ever got to play. Now, take this by thing. I know a lot of people love Pokemon. I know there's a lot of other Pokemon games out there. But Silver is the one that I've always come back to. I love the region, I love the Pokemon, I love the legendary Pokemon, and it's always become my favorite Pokemon game of all time, my favorite area of all time. I love this game, just again, probably nostalgic facts, it's the first Pokemon game I ever played, but anytime they've ever remastered this, or brought it back out, or you can play, or even that Pokemon Gale of Darkness for the GameCube, which was a very underrated game as well. I always love to go back and play with these characters, and that is exactly what I did within this game. And Silver, I still play to this day. I still have my original save from when I was a kid, and it's sitting over there on one of my shelves. And in 2000, my dad brought me into the world of Diablo 2. Now, the first Diablo was a big thing in between me and my dad as a child. Maybe I shouldn't have been playing that game, but I was bait when the bosses was coming around. I'd run around while he's attacking from the behind, and the bosses are in front of me. Now, when it comes down to another game, though, Diablo 2 was the sequel to this, the predecessor, which is now getting a remaster for this year, and I'm, like, really interested in that because, again, Diablo 2 is one of my favorite games of all time. I've discussed that before on this channel and all the different elements of it. I love this franchise, but Diablo 2 is still the peak of it all. It still works completely for me in every single route. I have so many memories when it comes to playing with my dad and even other friends within this, but creating a character, going about in this world completely just just in this completely just going on an adventures killing demons and monsters and going and running through dungeons and you know it's the same thing you do in Diablo 3 but within this one I love the concept more I love the worlds more I love all the different character interactions and especially the secret cow level if you've never seen that go check it out for yourself type in secret cow level Diablo 2 on YouTube you're gonna have a blast with that and in 2001 Super Smash Brothers Melee came out now I remember being in school when this game came out and I had 
had just gotten a GameCube, I had maybe Lord of the Rings, the Two Towers game, or like something else to this nature. And for me, Super Smash Brothers was a game that I didn't know about the Nintendo 64 version. I remember one of my friends at school was like telling me, oh yeah, there's this game where you have Mario and Link and you have them all fighting together. I'm like, excuse me? What did you just say? They're all fighting? And I was a fan at that time of, you know, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, stuff like that. I liked those games. But to hear that, like, some of my, the most iconic characters in gaming were fighting with one another. What's this? Now there's a new version of it? And I remember he, you know, he got the game. I went over and played the shit out of it. And I was so addicted to it, I begged my parents to go and buy it. Because I loved it. And Super Smash Bros. Melee might still be my favorite Melee game in the whole entire franchise. I, st I love Ultimate, the new one. I love everything they're doing with that. But Melee, nostalgic-wise, has just sunk into my heart in so many different ways. And in 2002, Kingdom Hearts debuted on the PlayStation 1. Now, funny thing with this one is I actually played the second game before I played the first one. But the first one still remains to be one of my favorite video games of all time as well. I love this franchise. The first two games are phenomenal in every single way. And yes, they are very dated when it comes to gameplay and graphics. One time jumping through these and going to different Disney worlds. And the thing that I really much appreciate about the first one in particular is the way that it really takes in the classic Disney flair really much taking in and going about in each and every world not hand-holding you the whole entire way there is a lot of elements of the game to really much push you forward and make you learn yourself it is a tough one at that but it's one that always remains to be everything I wanted and more in 2003 let's jump back to the GameCube Mario Kart Double Dash still my favorite Mario Kart game today if I had to choose only one Mario Kart game to play it would be this one I love the double dash dynamics of having the two different characters in the cart the different abilities they could have and just the different carts and the different amount of characters and the items and the special items they had was all just very much fleshed out i love the cart the race tracks all along here this is just a game that you know just a couple months ago me my girlfriend and her sister decided to play this instead of the newer one and for good reason this is the best one out of them all and i'm still just sitting there waiting for them to bring back a remaster version or a new version of double dash because i feel like that's what a lot of the fans want 2008 my life was changed because i had never played the original halo yet at this point but halo 2 debuted and i was at my cousin's house and they got it and i played the hell out of it we played the entire campaign in one sitting and i was absolutely in love from top to bottom the whole new world the multiplayer this is the reason that i wanted an xbox and i never had the original xbox which sucks but i still have my original copy of halo 2 i bought the copy even though I didn't have an Xbox because I, I wanted Halo 2 that bad. And to, to this date, it still remains as like a nostalgic thing to me where I think this is probably my second favorite Halo game. But like if I'm speaking on nostalgic, this is my first one. I love everything of how you got to see the side of the Arbiter and then you got to see the side with Master Chief and you got to see the different sides of everything going about inside this world. I just thought it was so creative and unique and the dual wielding, all that elements, everything from the first Halo, because I went back and played it. It's hard for me to play that one because of how much I love Halo 2. And then when they remastered it it was just excellent as always Bungie completely killed it and for me I just love this one so much more than I think about it this actually might have been my first introduction to first person shooters like an actual first person shooter jumping over to 2005 back to the PlayStation 2 Kingdom Hearts 2 debuted and I absolutely fucking love this game this is one of the most phenomenal games I've ever played and I will always stand by that top 10 games of all time took everything from the first game and said we're gonna double down and go bigger than ever in that and from there we had a lot of spin-offs with the Kingdom Hearts franchise, some better than others, but all adding to the world, and you know, the Kingdom Hearts franchise has probably had like 12 different games in the entire franchise at this point, that all very much culminate to 3, which I have a lot of issues with 3, but 3 is still a good game, but 2 is still my favorite Kingdom Hearts game to date. And they took a risk with starting off with this completely brand new character that we had never really much experienced at this point adding in a new thing other than just the heartless but also having the soulless with the organization 13 and all of those elements but still still centering down into everything that this is disney this is a disney game with final fantasy elements kind of put throughout it and just being again traveling to different worlds and actually introducing say the pirates of the caribbean world which is probably still my favorite world out of this entire game but just doubling down on that doubling down on the action the forms the keyblades the interactions between characters this is 
a game that is intense to all ages. And when if you've played the final mixer version, that version is even harder than the other ones. I love this game. I could literally replay this one over and over and over if I needed to. And it's just one that, again, the gameplay, stuff, stuff like that still is a little bit... How do I say? It doesn't hold up as well, but it's a game that really much holds up in my heart so much, and I love this one to death. And in 2006, the PlayStation 3 debuted, me and my dad got it, and the first game we got was Resistance Fall of Man. Now, we didn't know what this was. We didn't really know any of the games for here, but I will give this shout out to the PlayStation 3, one of the best lineups ever for a, like, first day release for games. You know, you had a lot, there was a lot of games, but Resistance Fall of Man, I don't know what it was. The title, the cover, looked awesome. So me and my dad got it, and we played it, it was co-op shooter, and it was freaking amazing. I I this I count this as one of my favorite first-person shooters of all time, and this franchise in general. I really think Sony needs to bring this back. I think this could have been their Halo if they really doubled down on it, because it kind of is Halo. It's a World War II version of Halo if, like, what if World War II never happened, but aliens came down instead? It's absolutely insane. It's dark. It's gritty. It's, like, everything I've ever wanted, like, Gears of War mixed with Halo, and, like, being two of my favorite franchises of all time combining together made an excellent piece here great mythology great world building and a really interesting character that has a lot going through him and especially as you follow him throughout the entire franchise there's a lot that happens and even though i don't think this might be the best resistance i still think two is the best one when it comes to gameplay and story the first one is so nostalgic to me that again me and my dad love to pop this in randomly and just play it on the ps3 it's still the reason that i own my playstation 3 is just to play the damn game in 2007 my life was completely changed again with one of the best games i've ever played in my entire life now it sucks because i couldn't include its sequel in here because there's another great game that came out that same year which i'll just say bioshock infinite i love i'm sorry you couldn't be included on this but the original bioshock game is one of the most horrifying dark but one of the games that, you know, at the time I was a scaredy cat. I, sometimes I still am. Yeah, I still am. But Bioshock scared the shit out of me. But I was so intrigued to play it. Walk around Rapture, fight my way through, and figure out where I was going. This is a game that I probably go back to every other year. Just to re-experience it all. The twists, the turns, everything of that nature is great. This is a game that's screaming to be adapted into a movie or TV show, and it sucks that Gore Verbinski's version didn't get to come off the ground, because it would have been phenomenal. I love this game. I love this game to all ages. If you've never played Bioshock, I'm really being vague because there's a lot of stuff in here that I don't want you guys to be spoiled on, especially at certain moments. But when you meet a big daddy for the first time, you are in terrible. Like, you are like, oh my god. It opens ferociously, and it ends in a fantastic manner. And in 2008, my parents got me Fallout 3. Now, I played this game. First Fallout game ever, and I fucking hated it at first. I said, what is this thing? Like, I don't get the RPG thing. It was a little bit too hard for me it just wasn't my flair so i stopped playing the game completely i said don't want it but i didn't want to tell my mom that because she got me it for christmas i didn't want to tell her that i didn't like it come back maybe six months later i was watching videos of people on youtube playing and i'm like this is really cool like what am i doing i need to play this game so i popped it back in restarted it back up and for some reason this time it clicked on how to play the game and from that day on i went back and played the original fallout game the first two i have every fallout game and i've played every single one of them even this stupid tactics one and i loved it to pieces now fallout 3 probably still remains to be my favorite one even though i really love new vegas and i and i enjoyed four for the most part and even that online one they did uh i can't even remember what it's called <laughs> i insert it somewhere here even then, I've been a fan of the Fallout franchise. I love the add-ons on Fallout 3. It was the first game that I really much dove into the DLC. And even just really much being able to form your own path, explore this wasteland world, this post-apocalyptic, which is something that I've always been so fascinated with. Defeating creatures and monsters and even making friends in this world. There's so much cool stuff in Fallout 3 that just completely took me by storm and I just look back and I'm like was I that stupid like six months before I really played this game I must have been and in 2009 Modern Warfare 2 came out and I think for me this is probably the best game I've ever played in the Call of Duty franchise there's a lot of different reasons for why this is so big you know I really like the first Modern Warfare I really like a lot of the Black Opses but Modern Warfare 2 is the game that I put the most amount of hours in with my best friend Kyle um we got this game probably like the same day 
it came out but we didn't really start playing it till like the next summer like we played the we played the campaign we did the multiplayer but when it came around that next summer that's where it was like the peak of call of duty playing every day night like till the time we woke up till the time we had to go to bed just leveling up our guy online even though there was no reason to playing with friends making fun game modes like cops and robbers and zombies and all sorts of things like that there's so many fun things in modern warfare 2 that i have nostalgic feelings for and if i could go back to any period of my childhood like with my friends it might be that part because we had so much fun staying up like 24 hours 7 playing this and i've literally still lost sleep from then but it was so much fun i think by the time the game had ended i had put 27 days just into the multiplayer alone but it's an experience i will never forget and it's a game that i love popping in here and there because i love modern warfare 2 and i love just reminiscing on those fantastic memories in 2010 mass effect 2 came out and this is a game that i was not a fan of that first game now i'm really interested to play it when the trilogy comes out because it, apparently they're totally redefining the entire game like not to the point of the story because the story was pretty good in the first one but the gameplay all that nature just didn't really jive with me so i'm hoping they really take what they did in two's gameplay or even three's and put it into there over there than that mass effect 2 and 3 i absolutely adore two is the best one for me though because of the story choices the character development in here and in general the character decisions you have to make i played this game probably like four times through just to save everyone i played it through pretty much killed the entire crew off because I'm stupid, didn't take my time, went back through a second time right afterwards. This is the first time with an RPG where I kept going back and back and back to complete, 100% complete the entire game. And Mass Effect 2 is still the pinnacle of this entire franchise from gameplay to story to moments. That entire last third act is one of the most like intense moments I've ever had. And Mass Effect 3, I could probably even say is also really intense, but it's more philosophical where this one was just like that giant last act climax in an action film where it's no here or nothing and i loved that mass effect 2 again if you've never played it i really emphasize you guys should get that remastered trilogy because i cannot wait to see the you know now the modern day combat the modern day graphics everything kind of bumped up a bit but the fact that you guys get to play through three fantastic stories is just phenomenal in 2011 my favorite gaming franchise has ended its first trilogy and that is gears of war 3 now i really like the first gears of war it's what really got me into wanting to get an xbox 360 if halo wanted me to get an, an xbox the 360 was from gears of war and that's the exact reason why i got a 360 the when it finally came out um gears of war 2 i really loved but gears of war 3 was just everything i could want and more i think the online was perfect i love i still go back and play it here and there i think it's so redefined and so fair like all the games all the guns feel fair playing this the different characters unlocking the different characters putting in all that time and gears of war 3's final story just felt so satisfying i knew characters were gonna die this was it and it still broke my heart when some of them did i loved it all the way up to the ferocious ending and the way that it ends and now we're in four and five and the way that they're telling their stories feel very great but still even then even though i really enjoyed four and i loved five Three is still the peak of it all, and Gears of War has become my favorite gaming franchise of all time because of this. I mean, hell, I have two actual giant video game gun lancers from them. Like, come on. I'm a nerd, I know, but I own two giant Gears of War guns, and it's totally fair with me because I love Gears of War 3, and if you've never enjoyed the game, if you've never even played a Gears of War game, if you love gritty horror shooters this is gonna kind of be right up your alley 2012 borderlands 2 debuted now the first game was kind of a disappointment for, for me i did not like the first borderlands i liked the humor but the story was very lacking the characters had no world or arc and i know this is playing in a wasteland world but i found it to be quite boring Two completely it feels like it took all those complaints and said okay we're gonna make better worlds better cooler areas better characters and even a better story and hear me out an awesome villain one of the best villains i've probably ever encountered in a video game before handsome jack and i love borderlands 2 this is a game that i've probably played almost like probably i want to say 10 or 12 times through with just the same character and then when you get into actually talking about playing as different characters that's probably another an additional five different times i've played it on each and every console it's ever come out on i've enjoyed this game immensely with friends and family and i just consistently go back to it the side quest the story everything of it is so much fun this it just makes you laugh like this is just an energetic entertaining game that's just fun to level up your character and after you beat the game there's
there's so much more after that and one of the add-ons in here is one of the best add-ons i've ever played tiny tina's dungeon oh my god it's so perfect it's like dungeons and dragons but you're placed inside the board game it's so fucking perfect in 2013 the f one of the first games that i actually bought played in one sitting and then beat it in one sitting and that is the last of us part one now i say part one because we do have a part two but part one is one of the best video games i've ever played i didn't know what to think about this i really like the uncharted franchise i really like jack and daxter i really like crash bandicoot from you know naughty dog but i see it's another zombie game i'm like ah i'm kind of over the zombies at this point you know i love zombies don't get me wrong but i, I was over it then i saw the reviews come out 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 i'm like seriously that many 10s out of 10s? Okay, I'll, I'll take it. So then I jumped into it, and I went and uh, bought the game, and I went home, sat down, put it in, I didn't get up for probably a solid 16 hours. Like, I got up to go pee, get food, stuff like that, but I played it straight through. Um, one day, one sitting, beat the game. I was so enamored i was so in love with it the the opening scene was probably one of the first times i ever cried in a video game besides uh one of the big deaths in gears of war 3 i sat there just in utter disbelief of how incredible the game was um it felt like i was playing a movie it was tough it was brutal but it became one of my favorite video games of all time at that point and i loved the ending never thought we were going to get a second one then the second one was announced and maybe you'll see it on this list but that first game, I think, is perfect, um, top to bottom. I know the gameplay is a little bit repetitive, but still, that story is just absolutely phenomenal. A absolutely phenomenal. One of the best video games ever made, honestly. Of course, jumping over into 2014, this is when the next cycle of the video game consoles was finally coming out. You had the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One X, or Xbox One, whatever the hell it was called at the time. And I got the Xbox and the PlayStation 4. I was kind of a spoiled brat for that, but... Um, you know, I paid for the PlayStation 4, asked for the Xbox for my birthday, got the Xbox, thankfully. Um, the first game I got for it, though, uh, was Sunset Overdrive, which I loved. Uh, I was so excited for this because it looked like a mix between Ratchet and Clank, but rated M, and it absolutely is that in every single way. In fact, I was so in love with that, I was just really much like, if you've never played Sunset Overdrive, it is the most underrated game from the last next gen, or the last console generation. It's a blast, it's colorful, it's bloody, and it's just a ton of fun. Like, it's like Borderlands mixed with Ratchet and Clank. And if you've liked Ratchet and Clank, that's the best part about this. You're skating around, you're shooting things with all these wacky and customizable guns and killing all these different mutants and zombies. It's just a game you put a big smile on your face. And I'm so pissed I will never get a sequel to this because we deserve one and in 2015 the witcher 3 came out this was the year that i graduated high school and i remember the exact time i got this my friend got it before me and said dude this game's amazing this game's amazing the night i graduate we all went out and we we're all celebrating my friend's like you gotta get this game so we drove to walmart right after we we're done it's like 2 a.m in the morning went to walmart i said i want to buy the witcher 3 pulled it out bought it went home played the shit out of it and i love this game it's one of the best rpgs ever made it blew me away from top to bottom and i completely was just again in love with this game in so many different ways because of the story because of the characters because of the world itself and at this point i had never really played a witcher game i looked at one i played a little bit of two but three took everything and just redefined it and made it one of the best rpgs of all time if you've never played a witcher game i really much say go play three you don't need to play the other two to enjoy the story here it'll fill some context just watch a recap but 3 is just phenomenal. In 2016, the Uncharted franchise ended for now. Uncharted 4 completely was the end of Nathan Drake's story, and it was a game that I was excited for. It was one that I was looking forward to because 3 at that point was my favorite Uncharted game. And Uncharted 4, I kind of flipped back and forth with which one's my favorite. 4 is emotional in every way, introducing us to Nathan Drake's brother, but also bringing back every single character and bringing back a ferocious ending. And one that I think I love that it doesn't dive into the supernatural in this one. It actually dives in to more of a realistic ending and a boss fight that actually feels real it feels real nathan drake feels like a real character in here someone who kind of gave up all that to kind of explore an actual life outside of it all 
it is called a thieves end for many different reasons and i love uncharted 4 for that i think neil Druckmann destroyed the directing on this game and it's one of the best written video games of all time in 2017 breath of the wild legend of zelda came out and became my second favorite legend of zelda game of all time if it wasn't for twilight princess which is also another phenomenal game but breath of the wild is a phenomenal one it's one that completely opened up the world but in a different way not telling you where to go you just explore which for me kind of gives me like hesitation i'm like but I like to be told where to go sometimes, but it really told you, go explore this world, go see what's out there. And I haven't done that in a while when it comes to an open world game and Breath of the Wild really much said to just do that. And if you've never played Breath of the Wild, man, you are in for an experience. Yes, the story is beautiful. Yes, the graphics are really interesting and the characters are really cool too. But just that open world experience is something unlike anything that I've ever felt before playing one. And that's why I'm really nervous to see how Breath of the Wild 2 is. I really hope it's a kind of a different game than the first one because I don't think they'll be able to replicate that same feeling I got within it. 2018 God of War 4 or just the brand new God of War for the PS4 debuted out. And from the trailers, from everything, it was looking to be very different than what we have seen before. But thankfully it was because I at this point I had loved the God of War franchise. But I wanted so much more from it all. I was expecting more. I wanted that next thing for it. I didn't want to just play the next God of War and just be another hack and slash in there. No, they really took an approach to diving deeper into Kratos' mythology and him as a person. And that experience was unlike anything else. I've only played the game one time because I just... It's a long running game, but it's one that I'm I'm anticipating playing at least one more time this year, especially with the PS5 upgrade now added in. But I it's a game that I from top to bottom, I can remember every single sequence and moment and memory with Atreus and of course Kratos himself. That just puts a big smile on my face. The gigantic boss battles, the fighting, all of that nature. Cory Balrog completely destroyed this game and redefined what a God of War game should be. I get it, a lot of people didn't like the change, some people didn't, like the hardcore fans of God of War, which at that point I really liked God of War, but I was expecting that next change because I was so disappointed with Ascension, which thank god they did because God of War 4 is fucking awesome and the story is so emotional and the way it ends is very, like it just ends and that's kind of how life is, like certain things just end, it doesn't have to be giant and climatic and can just end very subtly and I love that. In 2019, Sekiro came out. Now, Bloodborne, Demon's Souls, Dark Souls, they all usually piss me off, but Sekiro really won me over. Now, preference, I haven't beaten this game yet, like really much at all, but I'm like pretty much halfway through, but I still dive in, I still go back and play it because it is a fun game. It's a hard one. I don't know if I'll ever beat it, but it was my favorite game of 2019 because it put a challenge in me that for me to keep playing it, but I was never getting frustrated. I always wanted to learn how I could expand, how I could grow, how I could go further in this world. And the samurai culture of it all is just absolutely perfect. If you've never played Sekiro, I think it is the best game out of all these kind of Bloodborne Demon Soul games that are hard to beat, and I'm excited to see what they do with their next venture into this world. In 2020, I mean, if you followed this channel for a while, you know what this is gonna be. It's The Last of Us Part 2. It's the best video game I've ever played. Now, I get it saying that a lot of people probably turning this video off, going, seriously, what the hell? I'm sure, by the thumbnail, if I do end up doing The Last of Us 2, a lot of you guys were probably also disappointed in that. I get it. Like, I actually, no, I do I don't get it if you hate this game. Like, I honestly, to God, do not understand if you hate this game. I don't understand if you don't like it. I, I seriously think this is one of the best written video games of all time. The way that it dives into the cycle of violence, the, the psychology of a main character, and really much earning every single moment. Um, it's sudden. It's, it's, I, it's, I can't even explain it into words how this game made me feel. But it's one that I consistently think about. It's one of the best stories I feel like ever told from part one to part two, being so seamless. And, you know, I think there is elements in part two. Like, I could have imagined them, like, honestly making part two into two parts, maybe exploring a little bit more of Joel and Ellie before everything went down, but you get that through the flashbacks, and I love the way that they wrote that all. I, there's so much I can say about this game, but so many things that just leaves me baffled, like, in unwords, and I'm gonna keep it simple, because I know there are people who hate this game. I, I love it to death. Again, I think it's one of the best video games ever made. It's my favorite video game of all time, like one and two, back to back. Um, I was just completely, utterly surprised. And I was one of the ones winning into this going, I'm excited, but I'm also very hesitant on this because I knew everything going in. I knew all the spoilers because people fucking suck. It spoiled the game for me, but I went in knowing everything and I walked out still an emotional wreck and one that I've played the game 
multiple times through this time. I've gotten a platinum. I've put like 150 hours into the game just because I really enjoy it. But to make sure that I feel this way, and the fact that even on a fifth playthrough, I'm still feeling the exact same way I, I felt in the first game shows me how I truly feel. And if you don't agree with that, fine, whatever. But it's my list, so I don't give a shit. Of course, 2021, that's the year. This is the year I turned 24. Um, But the thing is, there's not that many video games that have come out. Um, it's kind of been a weird year. So instead of giving you my favorite video game I've played this year, I'm going to tell you the game that I'm most anticipating this year for this one. And that is God of War Ragnarok. Uh, I don't know if it's coming out. So if it doesn't, Ratchet and Clank for sure uh, is the most anticipated game for this year. And that, that that's going to be it, guys. That That's this. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. I really much appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video overall. I had a blast talking about through all the video games that I wrote down on here. And I do have some video games that are honorable mentions through each and every year to kind of discuss. So I have Gauntlet, Dark Legacy, Spider-Man, Phantom some pain golden ai banjo and kazooie toy story 2 the video game which is kind of a nice little nostalgic for me um baldur's gate warcraft 3 jack and daxter 2 san andreas gta snake eater metal Gear solid bad company battlefront 2 uh twilight princess i already kind of mentioned halo 3 um left for dead Metal Gear Solid 4, Brutal Legends, very underrated game with Jack Black, uh, Red Dead Redemption, Dead Space 2, Max Payne 3, and of course I also mentioned this one, Bioshock Infinite. Uh, that is my list, guys. Those are my favorite video games from every single year I've been born. Look out for more movie reviews, geeky content, all sorts of stuff like that. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, as well as head on over to Sandwich Films on how to see films early. Of course, guys, until next time, stay classy.